Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Tim Call. I'm one of the hematologists here at Mayo Clinic, um, Rochester, Minnesota. And, uh, and I just wanted to spend the next few minutes describing a little bit about uh, the disease chronic lymphocytic leukemia, um, which uh, I specialize in along with several of my colleagues here. The, um, this is a disease that if, if you've been given this diagnosis or have someone who's had this diagnosis, uh, the word leukemia, or as I call it, the L word, is one of, that's quite shocking. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about it, and hopefully we can remove some of the, the fear that goes along with it. Um, the most CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, um, can also be called small lymphocytic lymphoma. One of the diseases that has two names, uh, the World Health Organization classifies chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma as the same disease but that will, it will sometimes create confusion unless you're aware of that. Uh, this is the most common what we, lymphoid malignancy in, the, in North America, and um, it is one that we see uh, on a regular basis. Now, um, the average age of, or the median age of diagnosis is uh, in the, the mid, six, mid to late 60s. There's a slight predominance of males versus females, um, but both sexes can be affected. The one thing that needs to be mentioned about chronic lymphocytic leukemia is that it's often an incidental, or as I call it, a surprise diagnosis. Um, because many, most patients at diagnosis have no symptoms, it comes up as kind of a, oh, by the way, there's a problem in your blood test. So for example, if you, you may have gone in for a hypertension check, a gallbladder surgery, a preoperative exam, and the blood was found to be abnormal with an elevated white blood count. That then generates a series of tests. The test that's used most commonly to confirm the diagnosis is what's called a flow cytometry. So the diagnosis can be established just with a simple um, blood test process in a pathology lab, uh, which can identify um, that, in fact, this is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Once the diagnosis is made, then the question is, where do we go next? The what happens really, what should happen next is evaluation by a specialist uh, in hematology or oncology who knows uh, about chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And we generally will start with a fairly simple staging evaluation. This can include in patients who are without symptoms, um, some additional blood tests, physical examination. The physical examination will focus on whether there are enlarged lymph nodes, whether there's an enlarged spleen. The blood tests will focus on several things. There are a couple blood chemistries that can be helpful. One's called an LDH, one's called a beta-2 microglobulin. Elevations in these may both um, be important in predicting time from uh, diagnosis to potential need for treatment. Going into a, a few more um, advanced tests, going into the molecular area, we have a test called a FISH test, which looks at chromosomal mutations and can be very helpful in separating out who may need treatment sooner versus later. There are also molecular tests um, called ZAP70, CD38, and several other um, complex names, and another test called an immunoglobulin mutation status, which really looks at the gene level regarding the propensity for progression. Now, the main thing to um, remember in CLL is that not everyone with CLL needs treatment. It's a disease that can look the same under the microscope but can have a great variability of need for treatment. So some patients need treatment at diagnosis, in which case more tests would need to be done, such as a bone marrow biopsy, CAT scans, and then moving towards treatment. Other patients have no symptoms. The blood test findings are fairly mild or minor although still significant, and one can move on to a period of what we like to call active monitoring. In the past, this has commonly been called watch and wait. That's kind of an anxiety-provoking term. We like active monitoring, so we're watching. With active monitoring, um, patients may be able to be watched very safely for one, five, ten, and in one case, I have a gentleman who was watched for 50 years before he needed treatment. Many patients will not need treatment during the rest of their natural adult life. Yet, on the other hand, about half of individuals, at least with CLL, will need treatment at some point. In those individuals, a, a focused series of periodic tests 
physical examination and monitoring is appropriate. In, that, in the group of people who then become symptomatic, there are um, criteria for treatment such as development of anemia, low platelets, symptoms such as weight loss, night sweats, progressively enlarging lymph nodes, progressively enlarging spleen, then the observation is then stopped and we move to treatment. The unfortunate thing with CLL is that we don't have a, disease, a treatment. We don't have a treatment that clearly will cure this. We don't have anything that clearly will make it go away never to come back again. Yet, there are many treatments and when we treat, the goal is remission and, and hopefully the most complete and long remission possible. So when treatment is started, we go through a series of treatments. Currently, we tend to use in patients who are um, in otherwise good health what is called chemoimmunotherapy, a combination of chemotherapy drugs with a drug called rituximab. With that, we're seeing very high response rates and very good remission rates. Many of these are long-lasting. Once treatment's over, we go back to careful observation and monitoring. If treatment fails, then there are um, the possibility of what we call salvage treatments and even progressing up to bone marrow transplantation. With CLL, there are several things to know during this journey. There are complications that can occur. There is an increased risk of infection, increased risk of uh, uh, the, the infection, increased risk of infections, and these infections can be viral reactivations such as shingles, pneumonias, and several others. There's also an increased risk of complications called autoimmune complications. A couple of these diagnoses are hemolytic anemia, where there can be antibodies breaking down red blood cells, or immune thrombocytopenia, where there is breakdown of platelets. These are treated with slightly different measures, and um, but frequently, usually will go on remission. The, finally, there is an increased risk of skin cancers, so sun protection is important. It's a complex diagnosis and one that needs active monitoring and support throughout. Uh, here at Mayo, we have a team of physicians who specialize in CLL along with a nurse practitioner. We have about 250 to 300 new referrals per year, and we have an active um, database of over 3,000 patients that we study and try to learn more from the disease, and we have active ongoing research uh, in CLL, causation of CLL, and familial CLL. Thank you.